Hello, I'm Randy Char, owner and broker of Char Luxury Real Estate. Today I'm really excited on the market updates and happy St. Patty Day. So Randy, happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Happy St. Patty's Day to you. Yeah. Like your like your blazer. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. This I call this my like my master's blazer. Oh yes. You know, yes. very green. I and I love your shirt too. Thank you. And today we are here. I'm super excited. We're here at the Red Rock Country Club. Mm -hmm. And tell us about uh, this home. Yes, we're at uh, 11600 Evergreen. This is a phenomenal plan. You know, when Red Rock or the developers of Red Rock built this home, this was considered their most executive highest series, uh, noted with the high ceilings. In fact, this home is single story, over 4,000 square feet. But obviously what makes it super special is what you see behind us. Mm -hmm. Um, the mountain Hello, view, the golf Char, course view, of of it's absolutely Luxury incredible. So really uh, it's been really exciting. Updates. In fact, this home went on the market last week and we had three cash offers in the first day. So pretty, wow. pretty incredible. Wow, just in one day? Just in one day. Just shows you the pent up demand for homes like this mm -hmm. uh, that are going on. Absolutely. And I know you love golfing. You've golfed here before many times. This actually, this is the number one handicap hole. I think it's hole five. It's straight uphill over 500 yards. And uh, it's a beast, but uh, it's a beautiful hole. Wonderful. Well, super excited to be here on this beautiful day. And so today we'll start with the February market update. Sounds good. So starting with our Las Vegas market, uh, units sold in February was 2,768. Percent difference from last year was up 11.8%. Medium price, this is a record high, 350,000, up 10.8% compared to last year. Right. It's always interesting when you say, oh gosh, it's a record high median price of 350000 <laughs> right? Uh, what is that? That's like apartment rent if you uh, look at the interest rates. Uh, but what that tells us is that uh, overall market is starting to, is continuing to swell. Yes. Uh, up 10% is uh, quite, a, quite a jump. That's a double digit growth. Uh, and typically in a healthy real estate market, three to 5% is kind of normal. Yes. So when you see something at 10%, that's, that's, that's huge. Uh, but what's also really neat is you're seeing the difference in the units sold is up 11.8%. Yes. It'll be interesting if there's enough supply to continue to feed that demand where we can have that type of increase. Absolutely. And in the luxury market, 1 million plus, uh, last month in February, we sold 95 units. It was up 131.7%, and median price was $1.56 million, also up 4%. Uh, again, the biggest, uh, the biggest thing here is the huge difference in the units sold. It's just showing that there's a lot more demand for the luxury market, and we're seeing prices move up 4%. Uh, we might see more of that happening as supply shrinks. Yes. Moving on to current availability in the Las Vegas market, we have 1,967 homes. Medium price at 432,000. In the luxury market, over a million, we have current available 314 homes and medium price at 1.99 million. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, very interesting. I think uh, in the over 1 million market to see just a tad under $2 million as far as the median price, not the average price, what's that sharing with you is that the luxury market is also being segmented into luxury, ultra luxury, and then, you know, some of the, the super high right. eight digit stuff, you know, 10 million and over homes are even yes. starting to move. Absolutely. So that's uh, it's showing a, it's an evolving market here in the luxury sector. Yes. yes. And then Randy, talk to us in a healthy market, they usually say, you know, six months supply. We're seeing less than a month supply here in Las Vegas. So what does that mean for us? Yeah, six months supply would be, I don't even know the word normal, but it's, it's, a, it's a balanced market. Let's, let's use that word. What that means is that uh, if you say, is it a buyer's or seller's market? If there's about six months supply, you'd say it's kind of even on both sides, which is good transactionally because you have a good number of buyers in the market and you have a good number of sellers in the market. When you're at one month supply, what that says is you have an overwhelming demand and not enough homes to go around. So what happens? You see the multiple bids, you see people buying homes that were not their ideal first choice, but they want to buy something because they have to live somewhere. Right. So you're seeing a lot of that activity. And unless um, either demand goes down or there's more supply coming to the market or the builders build more, what you're trying to keep up, yes. you're going to be in a state where uh, I, I think that you're not going to see a lot of change for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it'd be interesting to keep an eye on the, high, you know, the increasing price, Right. if the builders could keep up with the demand. It will be interesting to see what happens you know, later this year. Yes. 
So last year, we had a total of 101 units sold, and the median price was at 1.12 million. And then this year, year to date, we have 27 homes sold, median price at 1.345 million. And current availability is only 10 homes at a median price of 1.412. Randy, talk to us about this. Uh, are we gonna be on pace compared to last year? Well, just doing some quick math, at 101 homes in 2020, that's about eight homes a month, give or take a little bit over. Right now, we're not even three months into the year at 27, so we're pacing more than 10 a month. Mm -hmm. So if we keep this up, we'll probably eclipse 2020 by a good 20%. So that's pretty significant. Absolutely. It's also telling is the median price is up 17.3%. That's a huge number. Yes. And if you recall the earlier numbers, it's far greater than the average median price at 4% for the city. You say, why is that? I think what you're seeing is in the higher end neighborhoods, that are lifestyle oriented or newer or more modern um, or in phenomenal locations. Red Rock has the golf, it has the clubhouse, it's close to downtown Summerlin. Uh, so there's a, a lot of demand in, in this particular community and other golf course communities um, or master plan communities around the city. Opposed to the large traditional homes that are just in, in, on big acreage. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's one of the reasons why you're seeing that. The other thing interesting is with only 10 homes available, yes. The median price is one four. Yes. It's actually trending up. Up. Um, and in fact, when we listed this home, it's really telling because this was listed at 1.7 okay. uh, a week ago or so. Yes. And we had a bunch of cash offers the first day. So there's definitely pent up demand. And which which cash offer won, Randy? <laughs> <laughs> well, we did definitely take the the seller chose the highest cash offer. Um, so in this case, uh, they, they, the seller said, listen. What was important to us is get a solid number mm -hmm. without the contingencies because it's not just price. You have to remember, folks, it's a lot about terms. So whether you are negotiating on the buyer side or in the seller side, it definitely helps to have someone on your team that really understands the different dynamics of the terms and how to set up the deals because it doesn't mean anything to put it in an escrow. It means everything to get it to the finish line. Absolutely. So talk to us about the contingencies because I'm hearing a lot you know, from my industry folks and even just personal experiences, a lot of people are waiving, you know, the inspection, the appraisal. What are, what, what are these trends that you're seeing right now? Well, obviously when the market gets tighter and the seller has uh, more of the leverage per se, you know, they can ask for certain things. They can say, listen, uh, it's fine if you finance, but we're not going to be uh, accountable for the appraisal price. So we're gonna waive the appraisal or you know, within a certain price point, we're gonna waive the appraisal. Yeah. And sometimes to make their offer stand taller or uh, more competitive with a cash offer, as an example, mm -hmm. you're gonna to need to do some of that stuff. Right. You know, on the seller end, it's a combination of what's important to them. Mm -hmm. You know, do they want performance or do they really just looking for the highest net number? Right. And this is great, folks, because I'm doing a lot of buyer representation, Randy. And the big question is, how do you want your buyer's offer to stand out in this multiple offer scenario, right? So then these contingencies, you know, thinking outside the box, how do we get creative yeah. to stand out? I think those are all really great points. And again, folks, if you have any further questions on these, you know, techniques or, you know, these uh, approaches, please comment below. We'd love to engage with you and uh, love to hear your feedback as well. Yeah, that's been a very interesting topic. Uh, certainly, uh, we've had some some pretty interesting studies lately or, or cases where we have buyers that are saying, how do I get in this home? Right. And sometimes it, the seller might want um, or might appeal to them maybe a letter, you know, who's moving into the home. Mm -hmm. They want to know that who am, I, who am I passing the torch to? Right. And sometimes if they like the story of, of your buyer, yes. that might help. Uh, maybe it's just uh, the business aspects of it is, you know, hey, uh, I want a lease back for the mm -hmm. providers, a lease back for the seller because they're in a situation where they may want to sell their home and get their funds, but they can't move right away. They right. may be inconvenient for them mm -hmm. to do that. So a lot of times the offer, buyer can offer those type of things. So it's a lot of different scenarios. Absolutely. Think creatively, think outside the box for sure. Yeah, great, great tips. And then last topic for us, Randy, we have a new construction trends. So right now, and you touched on this earlier, um, these are some of the new construction trends that I've been seeing. Number one, only a handful of releases with price increases each time. Number two, highest bid on lots. And number three, some developers are doing lotteries. So can you talk to us about that? Yes. So 
Um, you know, I've had a background mostly actually for working for three top 10 home builders uh, in the past uh, as a vice president of sales and operations. And I can share with you that depending on what type of markets that go, we go into, you know, we employ different strategies. And right now, when there's a lot of buyers and there's not, we can't keep up with construction, home builders are going to um, you know, use different methods to achieve the highest price and the performance to keep their portfolios going. Plus, think about a home builder. Their objective is they want to sell not just one home, they have to sell an entire community, and then they have to be able to pro forma the next piece of land where they're gonna build a continuation piece. And in order to do that, they need to show progression many times in the community that they're selling so that they can justify underwriting the next deal. So in order to do that, they're trying to maximize price, obviously. Uh, and in some cases, they'll use sealed bids where they'll say, we're releasing these three, just like you said, we'll release these, these three lots, uh, bring your buyers, seal the bids, send them in, and then they'll take you know the highest and highest and best, highest and best in that situation. Or they'll do a lottery system. Or they'll just say first come, first serve. serve. If uh, if you know you're there, yep. uh, we'll tell we'll we'll announce when we release it yep. and first come first serve. First one at will we'll be able to buy the home. Yeah. So very interesting. Very competitive and we have buyers, you know, that are looking for new construction right now, but then if they're not ready to make that, you know, yep. bid. Yep. You know, they're doing to obviously miss that opportunity. Yep. yep. It might be important to point out, new homes can be a very good option still for your buyers. You have to keep that as an option for many of your buyers, especially if a buyer says, um, listen, I don't need the home right away. Mm -hmm. Or I really want something modern and I don't want to tear apart a house and rebuild it. Mm -hmm. I want it my way from the ground up. Right. Or I want to be in this new exciting location. Mm -hmm. Or I want the newest floor plan or technologies. There are a lot of reasons why builders can be an advantage. On the other hand, not for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times people are not in a position where they want to move. Right. Or at a pocket expense, they can afford the home, but if it doesn't have a yard, it doesn't have window coverings, it doesn't have electronics, uh, that can be very challenging because it's a lot of cash outlay after you close. Right. So these are all things uh, that you need to consider um, when you're buying a new home. Absolutely. So folks, what do you think? Please comment below, we'd love to hear from you. And if you have any other topics that you'd like myself and Randy to talk about in our next market update, we'd love to hear from you and obviously engage and incorporate those topics for our future market updates, Randy. Absolutely, very exciting to talk about. So again, Randy Char, owner and broker of Char Luxury Real Estate, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe, like, and comment below.